All right, good evening, everyone. And thank you so much for joining us for this live streamed Nature on Tap panel. Tonight we are hearing from Los Alamos County's Eric Peterson, the US Forest Service's Jennifer Sublett, Bandoliers um, Scott McFarland, and Carla Sartor from Los Alamos National Laboratory. I'm Rachel Landman, the Marketing Manager at the Pajarito Environmental Education Center, or PEAK. We are located in Los Alamos, New Mexico, and I will be the moderator for today's talk. This Nature on Tap event is brought to you by PEAK and the Los Alamos Creative District. So I'm going to turn it over to Jeremy Smith, the Creative District Curator and Events Manager. He's on the call tonight and he's going to take a few minutes to tell you all about this week's Virtual Science Fest and some other things that are going on. Hey Jeremy, how's it going? It's good, thanks. Good. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, welcome to uh, Nature on Tap. Like uh, Rachel said, uh, Creative District Los Alamos brings the Na on tap series. Um, this one virtual. We did do the History on Tap virtual uh, last month. And we also do the Science on Tap in partnership with the Bradbury Museum and Culture on Tap uh, as well. So if you're interested in some of the other on tap lecture series um, provided through the Creative District, go to our website, creativelosalamos.com. You can see that schedule, see who's coming up next, and also see the next uh, Nature on Tap in three months, I guess. Uh, also, starting tomorrow, Science Fest. So this is another uh, event uh, that's been going on in Los Alamos for a while, and this year we are switching to virtual. And so you'll need to go to sciencefest.com, and there you can register through the Whova app, W-H-O-V-A. Um, and that is basically the format we're using for the event. We've got virtual booths there where if you visit, you can uh, get into a raffle to win some prizes. It'll list all of the uh, speakers that we have. Um, and I'm not gonna go through the list right now, but um, I think to kick it off tomorrow night is the CEO of Impossible, um, Impossible Foods. Is that the right name? I'm sorry, I'm butchering yeah, that. Yeah, um, uh, but Pat you, you can take a look. You can take a look at that all on the website. Um, we've got uh, the Creative District specifically has a 20 by 20 art challenge that's uh, going to be put out tomorrow on Polar Lodge Art Lawn. Um, so in the last month, people have been working on some art uh, specifically for Science Fest on a 20 by 20 inch panel. Um, and the, the theme is 20 20 eyes on the future and so there's about 10 submissions from local artists there and those you can just uh, walk along the sidewalk in front of fuller lodge and right along central and see uh, see that art um costume contest as well so just take a photo just as your favorite sci-fi character um post it on hashtag uh, sci-fi los alamos and uh, we'll be judging the winners and the winner gets a 3d printer a mini 3d printer so that's pretty cool for this year um, and then also, like I said, there's a number of, a number of um, uh, speakers, and, um, virtual booths, but you do need to register as soon as possible because it takes uh, about six to 12 hours um, to get registered through that website before you can access all of the, all of the events um, for Science Fest. And that does start tomorrow, July 7th, goes through July 12th. Um, and then you can take a look at all the events and the schedule on our website and um, sciencefest.com. Awesome, cool. That's, uh, yeah, so once again, thanks for joining us, Nature on Tap, uh, another event from Creative District, and uh, I'm looking forward to the, to the panel tonight. Thanks for having me. Awesome, thank you so much. All right, I am going to go ahead and turn it over to Scott McFarland from Bandelier next then. Um, so a little bit on how this program will work. Um, panelists will each speak for about five to 10 minutes, just about recent updates on the lands that they help oversee and then we'll open things up for discussion and audience questions. Um, so Scott is the Acting Superintendent and Chief of Resource Management at Bandelier National Monument. As the Acting Superintendent, Scott oversees all aspects of operations at Bandelier, including administration, facilities and preservation, resource management and compliance, visitor and resource protection, fire management and interpretive interpretation and visitor services. In his day job as chief of resources, he is responsible for compliance as well as stewardship of all natural and cultural resources within Bandelier. Scott holds a BS in environmental science with a minor in biology and has worked for the National Park Service since 2011. So let's see, I am going to go ahead and ask Scott to unmute himself. 
he had a couple of technical difficulties, so he's just going to be joining us via audio and he's going to share some photos with us as well. So Scott, can, can you hear me? I can. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Awesome. All right. Good evening, everybody. Um, thanks for the introduction, Rachel. Um, I don't have a, a ton of uh, trail stuff to share, um, but I guess the, the exciting news here at Bandoliers, we've been working on uh, repaving the entire uh, main loop trail. So the main loop trail is the you know, most commonly visited area in Bandelier. It's about 1.2 mile loop. Um, about 99% of our visitors uh, go on the main loop. And earlier uh, this year, in March, we started construction uh, on that, that trail and actually uh, ripped up a lot of the old asphalt and a lot of the old um, rocks that lined the trail and have completely resurfaced uh, the trail with the stained concrete. So I'll share a picture of that. And you're getting the first insider look here at what the new trail surface looks like. Um, so if you're familiar with this trail, uh, it's pretty stark difference to what it was before. So the original trail surface was a, an asphalt and it was poured uh, sometime in the late 60s, early 70s. Um, the original plan was to just re-pour the asphalt, but I wasn't a big fan of a black ribbon of asphalt going down this uh, spectacular area. So I was able to pull together some additional funding and go with a concrete that'll last hopefully, you know, 50 to 100 years. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, the construction's wrapping up actually this week. Uh, so we're hoping that we can reopen it to the public um, here this coming weekend. Uh, it's up to the, the contractor. So uh, don't hold me to that, but it's looking promising that uh, folks will be able to come out and access that area um, this coming weekend. So. Um, some other trail things that are going on in the park is a lot of our wilderness stream crossings in Frijoles Canyons um, are getting some primitive bridges put into place. So you may see some of those if you hike down like the Ponderosa Trail, down to Upper Crossing, and, and then down to the headquarters area. Um, and then our trail crew is also working on reconnecting um, Apache Springs to the Upper Crossing Ponderosa Trail. So hopefully later this summer, um, that'll be uh, reestablished um, so you can enjoy that hike into the upper part of Freehold is. As far as some other updates in the park, um, we're mostly uh, completely reopened uh, for visitation and use uh, as far as day use goes. Uh, we still have no overnight use in the park. Um, working on getting um, some stuff established so we can open to backcountry use and then just uh, waiting on some additional supplies and custodial staff to be able to reopen the, the campground. Um, but hopefully within the month, we'll be able to get those things re reopened and going again. Uh, the Sanqui unit is still closed um, due to COVID and the high touch surfaces that exist out there. Uh, and then we also have a closure in place at Alcove House. Um, we have some intact archaeological deposits that are being exposed um, due to some use that has occurred up there. Uh, so we have that site closed as well currently. You know, we're working on a plan to be able to reopen that, uh, hopefully uh, later this summer, but with uh, limited uh, use up there. So not what you may have uh, been used to historically. Uh, some other random things that are going on in the park from just the resources standpoint. Um, we have a tree planting going on uh, that we started last year, uh, replanting in the Lost Conscious Burn Scar area. Yeah, we got about I think 13 to 14,000 trees planted last year. And we partnered with uh, the Santa Fe National Forest, the Nature Conservancy, um, the USGS to pursue some funding through the Wildlife Conservation Society. There's a, a grant that we pursued that'll allow us to plant another 100,000 trees over the next two years. Uh, so we have 25,000 trees that'll be planted this year, uh, mostly in the Alamo boundary area of the park, as well as along Obsidian Ridge on the Park Service side. So, and then next year we'll have another 75,000 that'll be planted. Uh, we're using this year as kind of a logistics test to see how it goes. And that planting will kick off uh, later this month. Uh, also in the last couple of years, we've reintroduced Rio Grande Cutthroat uh, to Freeholies Creek. 
So in partnership with the uh, Game Fish, and it looks like they're doing really well. Um, so we've actually been able to reopen uh, frijoles to recreational fishing um, everywhere above Alcove House. So from Alcove House to Rio Grande is all closed just because of the amount of use and to protect other resources. Plus the creek has been drying up lately. Um, but it is open to catch and release, uh, single barbless hook, and they're gorgeous uh, Rio Grande cutthroat in that creek. So if you fished here historically or you're interested in getting out, uh, you're welcome to come out and, and do so. Uh, we've also reintroduced uh, American beaver out of Freeholies. So they were gone since the late 1950s and actually just did another reintroduction today. And so we're up to uh, a dozen that have been released into the creek over the last year. So uh, they're starting to establish, but predation is high on those uh, released individuals. So, but we do have a couple that are still present in the creek and we've added a four this uh, spring and early summer. That's really all the updates I have. Awesome, thank you so much, Scott. Um, does anyone have any questions for Scott right now? Um, if so, feel free to type them in the chat. And otherwise, um, we can move on to our next panelists and maybe get to any other questions at the end too. All right, let's see. I'm not seeing anything come in. We did change the settings, um, so you'll just be chatting with me privately. Um, and then I'll relay those questions to the panelists. Um, so awesome. Thank you, Scott. Um, that sounds great. If people um, do want to fish, do they need to get a permit through Bandelier? Or how do they go about doing that, especially with the closure right now? Yeah, we're, we are not getting into the permit business. Um, so you're okay. required to have a, a state fishing license. So. Okay, awesome. That is good to know. I didn't, didn't know that before. Oh, we just got one question, actually, just a couple came in. Um, so Bill asked, any chance the Falls Trail will be restored to the Rio? Actually, yes. So the Falls Trail, um, as you may be familiar with, after the flooding from Las Conchas, uh, the, below the lower falls, the entire landform that the trail was on uh, is actually gone. So that whole cliff face uh, fell into the, the canyon bottom and is now somewhere down in Cochiti, probably. Um, so to get that trail going again, um, we, we've looked at a few different options. Um, I've come down uh, from Ancho and then hiked up and you, you can <laughs> make it um, up along the falls, what used to be the falls trail, but it's pretty sketchy um, by the lower falls. So I would not encourage people to do that. Um, there's a good chance you'd get injured doing that. Um, so we've looked at some uh, interim options, uh, potentially like a ladder um, in a couple of places um, would probably be our, our best bet, but we're putting in for funding, uh, which will be a multi-million dollar project uh, to reestablish the trail as it formerly was. Um, so similar to CCC style of construction, um, it's a pretty, uh, It'll take a significant amount of work and resources to pull it off. Um, but it looks like those resources may be becoming available uh, with the Great American Outdoors Act uh, passing the Senate and then hopefully it'll make it through the House. Um, that will open up some additional funding um, for deferred maintenance in national parks and this trail is con considered deferred maintenance. So uh, yeah. stay tuned, but probably nothing within the next couple of years on that. Okay, and then he also asked, um, he's noticed a camera at the bottom of the Apache Springs Trail. Is that for wildlife? It is, yeah, yep, and wild visitors, but no. Uh, actually, I would just pulled that camera uh, the other day, so two days ago, doing a, a beaver release out there, so uh, nice. not out there anymore, but yeah, we have cameras all over the park. Um, we've got a few wildlife projects going on um, from collaring mountain lions to uh, porky porcupine populations to spotted owls to famous salamanders. So uh, wildlife cameras are, are really helpful because we have such a small stack. So they allow us to, to monitor wildlife over a large area. Um, so you, you might run into those occasionally. Cool. Um, a couple more questions that came in for you. Um, were there any beaver families introduced or all single? Yeah, so one of the unfortunate things about doing beaver reintroductions in New Mexico is there is no holding facility. Um, so we 
partnered with Game and Fish, um, and these are the first set of reintroductions that the state has done. Um, so normally problem beaver are euthanized um, immediately after capture or they're caught with lethal traps. So it took a little bit of prodding and um, coordination, but we got them to start live trapping last year. And then we meet them in Española or um, Poake and, and grab the beaver and then hike them down um, to Apache. So unfortunately, because of the way that the trapping occurs, usually you don't capture uh, more than one at a time. So it's very rare that you capture the entire family in one, one evening. So it's pretty spread out, usually over a course of a couple of weeks. And since we don't have a holding facility, um, we have to immediately then release the beaver. Um, we try to keep track of where they're coming from. So if they're trapped from the same site, then we release them at the same site in Bandelier. Um, and last year we did have a pair um, that were captured from the same site, uh, but two weeks apart. And we actually found them on wildlife cameras um, a couple of weeks later reunited, um, which is pretty exciting. Unfortunately, that pair uh, somehow made it to the Rio Grande uh, and disappeared from Frijoles. So they made it over the falls. Um, we're not sure how they pulled that off, but it's pretty clear that they did. Um, and then actually today um, and yesterday, uh, a mother with one of her kits was released. So we caught the mother uh, the day before, or yesterday, uh, released her, and then today I took one of the kids down and released her in the same site. So we try to keep them together as much as possible. Cool. That's awesome. Um, and then I'm going to do one last question for you, Scott, before turning it over to Jennifer, our next panelist, and then if we have time, we'll get to other questions at the end, if that sounds good. Um, sure. So Alice asked, um, is a mask required to enter Bandelier right now? Um, are places to picnic open and how about bathrooms? Yeah, so the bathrooms at the visitor center are open um, and they're being cleaned regularly. Uh, we are not requiring masks on federal lands. Um, we're not subject to the, the New Mexico health order here um, and we cannot require visitors to wear masks. Uh, however, we are encouraging folks to wear masks uh, when they cannot maintain social distancing. Awesome. And then cool. all of Cottonwood is open. If you'd like to picnic there, um, that's a great spot. So. Sweet. Awesome. That sounds good. Thank you so much, Scott. Um, so I am going to go ahead and introduce Jennifer Sublet. She is going to be our next speaker. Um, so Jennifer works at the U.S. Forest Service. She hails from Illinois and has worked for the Santa Fe National Forest for about 11 years. She divides her time between the Española, Pecos slash Las Vegas, and Coyote Ranger districts, and is a member of the recreation team with an emphasis in trails, wilderness, and volunteer management. When she is not coordinating with volunteers or maintaining trails, she likes to hike, backpack, canoe, and camp, and she currently lives in White Rock with her husband and their two cats. Hey, Jennifer, how's it going? Hey, pretty good. Thanks for having me on today. Of course. Um, yeah, so I have a couple of updates, um, some general ones, and then I'll go into some trail updates. Let's see here, I got my notes. Um, so campgrounds are open, in case you weren't, you know, sure. They did open June 15th, and um, but there's still a fire ban. Um, we're we're hoping for the monsoons to to really pick up, obviously, um, but there's still a ban on campfires and and charcoal grills. And um, like Scott was talking about, the COVID considerations um, are still in place. Um, and you know, we're really re encouraging people to wear masks and to do social distancing. And I know it's sometimes a challenge on trails. So we're encouraging people if there's a really busy trail to, to find a less busy trail and, and we can give you suggestions for that. There's so many awesome places to go that you will hardly see anybody. So, um, Another thing is just a reiteration is, is um, leave no trace, take your trash home with you. Um, we're seeing a huge uptick in trash being left behind and other things happening, vandalism and whatnot. So we're just encouraging people again and reminding them to take their trash with them if they can because it, what happens is there's so many people um, recreating that the trash cans are overflowing by the end of the weekend and it takes some time to pick up all that trash. So. Um, I'm prepared and let's see here the the press release that came out today from the Santa Fe says there were no fire starts no reports of illegal fireworks and no abandoned or illegal campfires on three of the five districts uh, five ranger districts so that's good and and there were 
just tw 25 illegal and or abandoned campfires on Jemez and three on the Coyote District, which is it's pretty good for a busy holiday weekend. So thanks for everyone being responsible. And let's see here, let's do some trail updates. Uh, American Conservation Experience, ACE, they're out of Arizona. Um, they're an AmeriCorps affiliated group and their trail crews, we've partnered with them over the years and their trail crews uh, spend eight days on and six days off. And so there is a crew, if you have seen them, um, they're camping at the Rendija Trailhead and then they're hiking the Pajarito Trail down to Wahe Canyon then up onto the north aspect, the north side. And they're redoing, um, they're rerouting that section of trail that's very uh, unsustainable. So that's very exciting. And they're doing six hitches. So they're still around if you, you know, feel like um, heading out there to visit them. Um, you know, tell them thanks for all their good work. And um, the trail is designed for motorcycles, but it's it's for everybody. It's just specifically for motorcycles. So there's more armoring, um, et cetera. And let's see, what else? Um, since since I do volunteer projects and work with volunteers, I'm just going to put a plug in there for um, some needs for volunteers. The Hamas district, like I was saying, they've had quite the influx of trash, and, and um, there's been people that have been participating and they've been cleaning up, volunteering to do that. So if you have an interest in doing that, um, let me know, send me a message and I can contact or get you in contact with Leah or Brett over on the Hamas district and they can sign you up on a volunteer agreement and you can be part of the, the recreation team and help keep that area clean. And um, campground hosts, if anybody knows of anyone that is interested, we are looking for campground hosts on the Pecos Las Vegas Ranger District, small campgrounds. Um, that you have an RV and there are hookups, um, you know, electricity, sewer, um, propane, and all that at these campsites, um, host pads. So I just have to put a plug in for that. And then I deal mainly with trails, um, this is why we're here. And um, the Los Alamos Canyon Trail, or, or, you know, used to be known as the Knapp Trail, it does need some work. And it does have an archaeological survey clearance, so we can go ahead with that. Um, and I'm just kind of throwing around ideas about doing trail brushing, lopping, that kind of thing. Um, we have started doing work days with volunteers. Uh, you know, if the groups are bigger than five, then we make subgroups and, and never the two shall meet, so to speak. Um, we keep the group separate, um, practice social distancing, that kind of thing. So those are some things that I've been thinking about. Uh, I want to get started on that trail. And then if you're if you're in the know about the Greater Santa Fe Collaborative, um, we've had the Trails Working Group meetings. Um, we've had lots of public input. So there is there are plans to have a, a virtual Trails Working Group meeting um, coming up sometime this summer. So um, we're we're moving forward with this. Um, the land agencies have been um, looking at the, the decision, the picks made by the trails working group for, for trail priorities and they're working through them. So um, stay tuned on that. And that's all I have. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. Um, anyone have, oh, we just got one question for you. Um, any plans to remove the cows from Wahi Canyon? They are doing a lot of damage to the area. <laughs> That's been a topic of discussion for quite a long time since I've been here. Um, those are feral renegade cows. Um, and we do get that question um, every now and then. Um, there hasn't been any talk of it, but you know, it, it would be something that we would, we would um, revisit to see what sort of damage they are doing. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I can say about that. <laughs> Got it. Awesome. Thank you so much for the update. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask Eric Peterson to unmute himself. Eric is the Los Alamos County Open Space Specialist. Under the influence of Bowling Green State University professor, Eric moved to the Southwest from his home state of Ohio in 2009, where he started his career teaching on the Navajo Nation. His first experience with public lands was when he took a position as an expedition leader touring teenagers around the Southwest. After a few years leading teenagers throughout the Southwest, Eric found himself working for Bernalillo County Open Space. With his experience there, he took a position with the City of Albuquerque Open Space, and that's where he found his passion for land management. 
Over the past seven years, he has supervised trail projects that involved Rocky Mountain Youth Conservation Corps, the YMCA Youth Environmental Service Corps, Boys and Girl Scouts troops, um, church group volunteers, and local trail user groups that included hikers, runners, mountain bikers, and equestrians. Eric has been with the Los Alamos County Open Space for over three years. So Eric, what can you tell us about um, some recent updates on Los Alamos County trails and open space? Sure thing, and uh, thank you for having me, Rachel, and uh, thanks for joining us. Um, so prior to the pandemic, we had lots of things uh, rolling in a, in the right direction for us. Um, I was able to hire Open Space's first full-time uh, trail builder, Jesse. He has been on since March, and uh, he, he was able to, uh, to, to work on a, a brand new a mini excavator that we purchased right around the same time he got on, so he's got some fun toys to start playing with. Um, but uh, since we took a little hiatus from the pandemic, we are back on at full speed, we've been back at work for about a month now, and uh, some of the current projects that we've been trying to catch up on is, is really just going back to basics and uh, assessing the trail system and trying to get back to just doing trail maintenance and improving the trail system. So um, really, we started out just trying to do a lot of erosion control, especially in uh, areas where, you know, a trailhead starts at the end of a dead end road where all the urban runoff decides to run down the road and then enter our trail system. So um, if you've been out and about, you may have seen some new water bars that have been installed with the new mini excavator. Um, we were able to put some in at the head of Deer Trap and also down in Walnut Canyon, um, a couple access roads that were um, adding a lot of erosion to our trails and we're able to get in there and uh, fix that up and, and divert the water. And with this recent rain, I can say they've been working. So it's, it's exciting to see. Um, also, we've been out at uh, the Woodland Trail area. We've had, um, since that trail uh, butts up next to the golf course, every once in a while, a sprinkler head will get stuck on or it'll get ran over. And um, that leads to an excess amount of water on the trail. So, um, there was an accident where uh, a head was left open and it eroded a large section of trail. So we were able to bring in about 10 uh, little mini UTV dump loads of, of dirt to add to the trail. And we installed several more water bars to help prevent that from happening. Um, today we started a Amazon trailhead uh, improvement project where we again have been installing water bars on the access road above the trailhead to uh, help alleviate, you know, the erosion that's happening from that uh, utilities access road. Um, so once we get those water bars in, we're going to uh, grade out that parking lot to uh, allow that water to drain into its natural drainage. And then once we get that uh, leveled out in the way we want it, we're going to then bring in some, I guess, processed road material, um, gravel, and actually formalize that trailhead into an official trailhead so we can accommodate more uh, parking. Um, and to go about uh, some of our contracts, we had a lot of contracts lined up at the beginning uh, back in March, but due to the pandemic, um, we were forced to cancel the the YCC summer trail crew this year, which was unfortunate. They are a huge help for the Forest Service and Los Alamos County. Um, but uh, with that, we were able to still keep the contract with the Rocky Mountain Youth Corps. So we've been working with them, changing plans, altering dates, and going with the governor's uh, direction on group sizes. So it sounds like they are still anxious to get to work. We're still going to put them to work on various projects around the county even if it's just a you know small crew of a rotating of, of five uh, folks that are doing these projects, we'll still get them out there and uh, help them or help us, excuse me, eradicate uh, elm trees in certain areas of the county is what I'm going to have them focus on. Um, for trail status, all of Los Alamos County trails are currently open. Um, they have been seeing the highest usage since I've been here and speaking to my predecessor, it seems to be the highest use um, since our trails have really been out there. So as Jennifer said, if you know, if you see a trailhead that's crowded or there's no parking spaces, we have multiple areas to park and I encourage you to do so and explore a new section of trail just so we're not overcrowding trailheads um, where they already are overcrowded. Um, 
also some funded projects since our budget year just started on July 1st, um, our new budget cycle comes into effect. And uh, we do have a, a trails plan update that we are working with uh, LANL on a trails master plan since uh, a lot of our trails start on county, can sometimes go on to forest service, they cross over into lab property and then back into county property. So a lot of our hikers and people that use the trails are unaware of that. So we are going to try to come up with a, a master plan that just discuss how we go about uh, trail maintenance, standards, protocol on, on our trail system. So that's exciting that Lando would like to partner with us. I also have some funding for a BMX track uh, update out there on North Mesa. So our county council has funded us um, 100,000 actually to uh, hire a contractor, a professional contractor to come out and build us a BMX course with a starting gate and, and everything to be able to hold uh, small, I guess, competitions up here to be part of the larger circuit. So that's encouraging. And also with that, they uh, funded a, a skills park, which um, helps introduce um, any age group to biking. It will provide a, a track or a course that improves people's skills, um, teeter-totters from um, little rolling, rolling hills, and um, we're still in the process of finding a location and running through the public process on that. But uh, those right there are, are pretty much our, our current projects. Lots, lots going on on the county side, and uh, we're just really trying to catch up uh, from pre pre pandemic. So last but not least, we're hearing hearing from Carla Sartor from Los Alamos National Laboratory. Carla became the program lead for the Lanol Trails Management Program in March. 2019. She's been involved with the program and it's almost 50 miles of trails since joining LANL in 2014. Her day job is as a National Environmental Policy Act subject matter expert for the Environmental Stewardship Group at Los Alamos National Laboratory. She works to ensure the laboratory is in compliance while completing its mission. She works with a team of environmental professionals, biologists, and archaeologists to ensure projects across the almost 40 square mile laboratory are in compliance with requirements for three endangered species and almost 2,000 archaeological sites. She has a master's degree in land resources and environmental sciences from Montana State University, and she's worked in government, academic, and nonprofit settings on a range of ecology, natural resources, human health, conservation, and landscape restoration projects. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Carla. Thanks, everyone. I want to give you just a little overview of the Lanol Trails Management Program, um, in case people don't know about this program. Um, the next slide. Um, the Lanol Department of Energy Trail System. We have actually 25 trails, approximately 35 miles of these trails that are open to the public. Um, these are trails in the White Rock area. There are some in the um, Los Alamos TA3 area. Uh, these trails are, um, you know, Lanol's mission is not recreation as opposed to the Park Service and Forest Service. So we really um, need to stress that, you know, we can have continued access to these uh, trails if we continue to be good stewards of them. Uh, so that is what we try to do. Um, we have not had to close any of our trails due to COVID, uh, but as everybody has been reporting, we have seen a lot of use on all of the trails down in White Rock and everywhere. So I would echo uh, the other panelists' comments to try to find another trail if you um, find a trail that's overcrowded. And coming up here, I'll show you a little mapping project we have of um, trails in our area. Um, next slide. So a bit about our program, some of the things that we do. We have a bi-monthly trails working group meeting. Um, these are now online, as you might imagine. Um, there are trail users from the area. There are um, officials from actually each of these four management organizations that are on the panel tonight, um, Bandelier County um, Forest Service and um, LANL. And we talk about recent work projects, recent 
issues that have come up on trails and try to keep the communication going for these trails that do, as Eric pointed out, intersect um, the land management units in this area. Uh, the trails program is focused on resource protection. We um, make sure to reroute or otherwise um, protect cultural resources, particularly in the White Rock Trails area, there are, are a number of archeological resources. Um, we also close trails uh, to protect endangered species when needed, um, such as during spotted owl breeding season. Um, and we do trail assessments and identify maintenance needs like down trees or other erosion issues that we can try to fix. Next slide. Um, a few initiatives that we've had, we installed some wayfinding markers in the White Rock Trails area in 2017. Um, the, this area is, is popular with the residents that live nearby and there are a lot of social trails. So we're, we hope that installing some of these markers will encourage people to um, use the official trails and help you know where you're going in this kind of um, spider web network of trails down there. Um, we are also going to update the kiosk posters. Um, there's a picture of that on the right here. Uh, to have updated information, um, particularly on the um, unex unexploded ordnance um, potential in that area. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, next slide. Uh, so one exciting thing that we have is I put together with our GIS folks a printable eight and a half by 11 um, map of that White Rock Trails area. So on this map, you can see in gray, the White Rock community, uh, the North Oaks, the New Mexico Four uh, Highway, and then in blue are all of the uh, gates that are numbered, and those are the access points to the White Rock area trails. So we hope that, you know, in combination with the new trails markers that were installed and having this map in, the hand, in hand, you might have a easier time um, figuring out a way through these trails. Or in the time of COVID, um, explore a trail that you have not been on before. So it's not up on our website yet, but all the approvals are done. So it should be this week. So check back. And um, I hope this is helpful. If you have any um, comments or suggestions, just let me know. Um, next slide. So this is the uh, external, the public website for the Trails Management Program. Uh, you can get here by Googling Taking Care of Our Trails, LANL. Um, you know, this will uh, come up and you can find a link eventually to the map I just showed you, as well as the online map. And that first link under the picture there, Interactive Map for Los Alamos Area Trails, is what you click to get on a map that has trails for all of these four um, land management areas that we've been talking about. Next slide has a little screenshot of what this looks like. So on the left, there's a um, screenshot of the desktop version. I know some people like to be in their home and plan out their routes. Each of the trails you can click on, find out some information about it. Uh, you can get a little um, elevation profile, you can turn on and off layers, etc. And then recently we've turned back on the feature um, so that this map works well on mobile devices. So over on the right is a screenshot from my phone. And the nice thing about a mobile device is that uh, if you're familiar with that little blue dot, you can see where you are on the trail. Now, of course, this only works when there's service, which is not everywhere in Los Alamos. So we're working on um, a downloadable map option or looking into options, stay tuned, that hopefully is coming. Uh, but in the meantime, there are many places where this does work really well. So check it out if you haven't. Next slide, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to take a just a minute to tell you about some unique uh, hazards that exist on the on the trails or could exist. There's low chance, however, the White Rock area was used in the 1950s by the Department of Defense when they were in charge of protecting the laboratory. This area was used for training 
and some of the mortars were fired for these training purposes in um, the Ancho Canyon area and have been found in um, this White Rock uh, area. So I just wanted to bring everybody's attention to this um, and give you a little idea of what you should do, which is to recognize what these look like, um, move away. They're very safe if you, well, they're, they're very unlikely to change their status if they're not touched. So that is the advice is to don't approach them, don't touch them, don't move them, um, retreat away, and then um, report where you saw this sort of thing. This picture is actually uh, one of the mortars that was found in the White Rock area. So um, they're kind of these brown, the, that sort of shape things. Um, unlikely to see one, but if you do, we just wanted you to be aware that this is a possibility in the area. Um, you can call the new LANL emergency number. It's the, they've recently changed it to be 72400. So they're open seven days a week, 24 hours a day to um, take any emergency calls and they can send experts to, to take care of these safely. Um, that's all I have. If you have any questions about any of this, if you want more information about UXO, we have experts that can give um, more extensive talks to any groups that are interested. Um, you can email me with any questions at trails at lanl.gov and check out our website for the maps and additional information. Awesome. Thank you so much, Carla. Um, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and stop my share and then I'm going to invite everyone else that was on the panel to unmute themselves um, and maybe share their video if they have video um, so we can open it up for kind of some, some panel questions. Um, thank you all again for joining us tonight. Um, let's see, I thought it might be fun to ask all of you if you have a favorite trail or outdoor experience that you can have on um, the like lands near Los Alamos that you have. I do. <clears throat> okay, go for it, Jenna. I have, an, I have an entire area. I'm, I'm partial to the area. Um, it's north of Española before you get to Abiquiu. So the Window Rock Trail, um, the Lamitas Trail. It was part of the Forest Your Health initiative that we did a few years ago, and there's kiosks. So as you're driving towards Abiquiu on the left, on the west side, <clears throat> you'll see trailheads where you can park. And we've spent a lot of time um, marking those trails with mile markers, et cetera. But that is some of the best hiking, not in the summertime, but it is <laughs> absolutely gorgeous with amazing 360 views and some outstanding geology. So there's mine. <laughs> How about you, Eric? Oh boy, well, I guess what comes to my mind is just being being able to work in a place that is just so, has such diverse of wildlife. I mean, being able to step out of my office and head into a canyon and have a chance of seeing a bear, bobcat, mountain lion, deer. I've seen elk scat down in Pueblo Canyon. So um, it's just, it's amazing that all the wildlife that is here within our, our town and, and the opportunity to see that is very high. So it's something that I definitely don't take advantage of. And I really appreciate that uh, we do have these animals living amongst us. Cool. Carla, how about you? I, in the, in the winter, I really love the White Rock Trails. I love taking my little three-year-old on the um, Lion Cave Water Canyon trails. Um, just exploring down down there uh, for a very longer, a very long um, adventure. I also like the Ancho Springs Trail all the way to the river, um, while the um, Falls Trail isn't available, but I'm excited to hear that it may be in the future. And Scott, I'm going to close out that question with you, and then we've got a few more coming in from um, audience members, so I'll relay those in a second. Well, everybody was supposed to answer hiking in Bandelier, and they totally <laughs> failed the question. So I'll let everybody rethink that, and then they can re-answer. But no, um, one of my favorite hikes in the area is actually to, in Bandelier, is to do a shuttle. And you, you take two vehicles, and you put one down here at the visitor center, and one up at Ponderosa Campground. And then 
hike down to Upper Crossing from Ponderosa and then hike all the way down along the creek down to the visitor center. Um, then you can get, you know, some ice cream at the cafe down here and then it's a really nice day trip. It's like six miles, um, mostly shaded. That's a really lovely hike. And then I'm, I'm partial to the perimeter trail too in Los Alamos because it's right behind my house. So I hit that every day. So. Cool. Um, and then Scott, um, someone asked, can you give us an update on the relocation of bighorn sheep in Bandelier? How many are there now and where are they normally located? Yeah, so the bighorn sheep have been wildly successful. Um, they still mostly hang out along uh, the Rio Grande and the uh, White Rock Canyon corridor. Um, so typically I see them um, from Alamo, uh, kind of the mouth of Alamo Canyon up to the mouth of Frijoles. Uh, that's, that's the most common place to see them. I do see them occasionally off of the Dome Road, um, 289, Forest Road 289, uh, down in some of the canyons there. Um, the population's doing pretty well. Uh, our last estimate, I think, is around 147, 167, somewhere in there. Um, so just, just under 200, it seems like it's a good mix um, between just rams and and ewes and, and little lambs. So all things look good for them. Nice. Very cool. Um, let's see. Um, so someone asked, can the speakers give some websites where maps of trails can be seen? I know Carla, you showed um, that at the end of your slideshow, but I can also put some stuff in the chat. Um, or when we send out our survey email, I can ask um, that we include some links there too. Um, but I do want to give a shout out that you can order maps and books um, through Peak's online gift shop for curbside pickup. So if you go to peaknature.org slash shop, um, you can get some trail maps there. Uh, and that can be useful to help help you get outside. Um, any other websites or, or sites that you'd like to give a shout out to anyone um, before we move on to the next question? Uh, I have one to share that I, I totally spaced on. Um, we have gone through a renaming process for a lot of our trails here in Bandelier. Uh, some of the trail names didn't make sense and they ended in weird spots. So um, we've renamed all of our trails. We're working on getting our, our website up to date um, as well as the, the USGS, the national map up to date, which then will feed into all the other databases like Gaia or something like that. Um, but National Geographic did reach out to us uh, because they were revising their uh, Trails Illustrated map. That's kind of the really common one that uh, folds out pretty big. Um, so that has been revised and is now in print. So if you look for the, the Bandelier National Monument map, trail map uh, from National Geographic, uh, they have all the updated trail information. Uh, it's not an endorsement of their product, but it's currently the only print that I know of that has um, all the updated information. So, Cool. Let's see. Um, Eric, I know the, the county has some web resources too for trails, right? Um, anything you'd like to shout out? Um, we, so for trails, we have updated our, our trail maps and our trail brochures that are uh, currently on the Los Alamos County website under the trails, uh, open space and trails section. I know our GIS specialist is is working um, to try to provide a, a app, a county-based app for, um, for I guess, users uh, around that want to use our trails. But uh, I don't know the status of that right now. I know um, a lot of other things that's come up in the GIS, but that's something that I can uh, update everybody on when I hear more about it. Awesome. That sounds good. Um, let's see. So Judy asked um, if any agencies are doing bird banding this year. Uh, Bandelier is. So we have our normal bird banding operations uh, going. So you may have seen on social media, we caught an albino sparrow uh, here recently, uh, but we're just doing it with our staff and uh, one key volunteer. So it's not open to volunteers right now uh, due to COVID. So. And we're still trying to figure out what the school program is going to look like in the in the fall. It may be virtual, um, but we'll see what happens. For sure. Um, let's see. Randall also has a annual bird banding program on there. Oh, awesome! Uh, and I believe it's going again this year. Cool. Um, does that start in the fall as well, or 
have a they have a summertime site and a fall site. Let's see. Are there any activities that aren't allowed right now that folks should know about? Um, I know not all of the public lands allow like backpacking um, and camping, but like Jennifer, can people still go backpacking right now on Forest Service lands or are there any special things that they need to do to be able to do that? No, we, we absolutely encourage it. Um, it's just again, there's no campfires right now, no charcoal grills, but yeah, go for it. There's plenty of places to explore. 1.6 million acres. <laughs> um, let's see. Any other questions? Go ahead and type those in the chat. Is there anything um, that panelists want to add? Or? Well, I just wanted to say something about the Lanel Trails, Carla. Uh -huh. um, I've used the map, the one, the not the new one that's coming up, but and that has worked out so well. And the trails are marked so much better than they were like 10 years ago. So I, I enjoy oh, that wow. after work. It's, it's wonderful. So thank you very much. I'm well, glad to hear it. There's a few tweaks to do on the markers. If you see anything, let me know. And we're going to try to get a uh, work party out uh, this fall to adjust some of those things. But great. I'm glad to hear it's working for you. If you need volunteers, my husband and I can help. <laughs> so we're right now limited to Lanel personnel, but thank you. And we'll okay. keep you in mind if, we, <laughs> if that changes. Awesome. I just put um, the link to the taking care of our trails page that Carla showed in the chat too, if anyone wants that direct hyperlink um, and you can find the interactive map and everything from that. So um, that should be useful. Let's see. All right. Well, that is all of the questions that I've seen come in and it's about 630 right now. So we're kind of wrapping up right, uh, right about on time. Thank you. Oh, great work. Awesome. Um, but we uh, thank you all so much for joining us. It's great to hear about what's going on kind of on our public lands right now, um, especially since that's one of kind of the few things that we can still enjoy and um, get outside and stay safe doing. Um, everyone's, you know, coming, coming into the chat and saying thanks. Thank you for taking care of our local trails. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been a pleasure to have all of you and get an update. Um,